Whether you're just starting your cinematography journey or you're established in the industry, I can guarantee you that you've shot at least one or two music videos in your career. And generally 90% of those music videos are shot on low budget or no budget at all. And that's unfortunately the reality of the music video industry. So why do we do it? For us, that answer is to create a piece of work for our portfolio and something different than our ordinary commercial work. In this video, we're gonna be looking at a low budget music video we shot and also go over the pre-production, production, and post-production processes. The starting point of any music video is the artist. For this music video, that artist is Jesse Gold, a local Toronto R&B artist who is starting to make noise in the Canadian and American music scene. Jason, the director of this project, reached out to him and asked if he had any music that he had coming out that he wanted visuals for to collaborate on. Now, this is a tricky part of any collaborative music video, is setting your boundaries with the client, in this case, the artist. At this point, we discussed that there's no budget from the artist side of this project, and that meant that we were going to be funding this entire thing ourselves. If you're going down this route, this is the point as a production company, videographer, or cinematographer, where you are going to have the majority of creative control when it comes to the finished project as you're paying for it. With my past experience with shooting music videos, this is the number one conversation that has to be had if you're working on a collaborative basis, because this is going to set the tone of the project and also clear up any miscommunications that could happen in the future. With the initial conversations with the artists, as well as the song that we agreed on, a creative brief was made in terms of what we wanted to create. In this brief, we outlined the story of the project Project, what scenes would play out in the video, and finally the mood and feel of the piece portrayed by the design of the deck as well as the inspirational stills used. Whatever project we are doing, big or small, we always like to make creative pitch decks as it's a great practice to introduce into your process as a cinematographer. With the general creative locked, the next step was to move into shot listing as well as finding locations. The resource that we use for that is called Milano. This is a place where we like to put all our ideas in one visible location and then organize them to lock in how the project will be shot. And this is the middle note we're going to be looking at sort of an organized mess but we like to keep it kind of clean to whatever project that we're doing so here we have the main talent which is jesse and the vibe that he's going for so what we're going to build the look off of and then his ep that we chose the song of this is the references that we mainly pulled stills from as well as any other projects that we liked for this but we really like leon bridges's music videos as well as it fits the mood of what like jesse gold is going for i like to ask jason to put general frames together that he likes and then a general rundown of what the performances are going to look like with the song in mind as well so that's what he exactly did here and then we went into the shot lists crew and gear then location scout so we're going to look at the shot listing specifically and then what jason did further is he actually took the lyrics of the song and then kind of put the timestamps in there and what he wanted to see at those points in terms of scenes lighting uh performances actions with the talent and female talent anything like that so that's exactly what we have laid out here. And then more specifically, we went into what those movements feel like in terms of shot listing. So again, this is the locations, then location two and location three, and what those are gonna be looking at in terms of focal lengths, as well as movements, statics, tripods, anything that we had in mind for that. So going into the sequencing, I like to look at every location and then break it down in terms of what we're going to be seeing. I just do this for our first AD so he can see that, okay, in this scene, this is what the sequence is gonna look like. These are the frames that we're, they're gonna look like and did we capture those specific frames? And then also we have what the locations are gonna be looking at. So this is kind of like taking the general idea of the director, breaking down with a shot list with him and then further breaking it down into something that is digestible for the rest of the crew. The next thing that we're gonna be looking at in this board is the crew and gear. So we have the actual crew that we use. So a crew of roughly 12 people, so pretty light. And then the rental gear. So again, we went with the RA Mini and the 8th Black Satin and the Zeiss Super Speeds. We actually didn't use the 8th Black Satin because we saw that the lenses themselves had their own look to them and own like filtration, I would say, because they have that vintage aesthetic. And lastly in this board was the location scouts. So these are the locations that we looked at and I just dumped all the photos in here it's for us to look at and then this is what we're going to be basing art department off of and then shooting angles and exactly what we have to do on set and then what i also like to do is use an app called sunseeker so i know where the sun is going to be in all these places so in this case we're dealing with a lot of windows so i have to know where the sun's going to be at all times 
that sums up the pre-production board that we have. We could dive into it even more. There was a lot of iterations in terms of this board, in terms of locations and things we had to deal with. I highly suggest putting something together like this because you just don't want to show up to a location that you figure out and then kind of shoot it on the fly. When it comes to any production, the more you plan it, the better the output is going to become. So I highly recommend putting this step in your pre-production process. When it comes to the budget of the production, it was broken up into gear rental, crew, production design, post color, and feeding people on set, of course. We lucked out with the locations as they were sourced by talent. And that's just the reality of running a production. As much as we'd like to tell people that it's a spec project and we can't pay them, we always try to pay people who come out on set with us. But to achieve any low budget project, you always have to use the resources at your disposal. So using any locations that you know, hiring friends on set, as well as using any gear that you have to your own disposal. And speaking of gear, that's what the next thing that we're going to look at. For this project, we were going for a vintage look and wanted to experiment with some lenses that we haven't tried before. We shot this on an RE Mini paired with the Zeiss Superspeed Mark III's. Across the set, these lenses have a T-stop of 1.3 and we generally kept them wide open for the majority of this project. This project was all shot handheld, so we used our in-house Easy Rig paired with our shape handles for ease of use. For our lighting, we use our in-house personal kit, which was a Forza 500, an Aperture 300D, an Intellitech Mega Light Cloth, a Nanlite Pavo Tube, a 6x4 scrim, some CTO gels, two 4x8 floppies, a 4x4 bounce board, and all the needed grip and stands. With all that pre-production out of the way, the next thing that we're going to be moving into is production and how we shot this. To put this in perspective, we shot this within 24 hours. The bedroom, living room, and rooftop scene were all shot throughout the day, and the outdoor field scene was shot in the early morning just as the sun was rising. This was a tight production schedule because we wanted to challenge ourselves A, to do this all in one day and see what we could maximize in terms of a one day rental and when it came to gear. The first thing that we're gonna be looking at is this living room scene. I'm just gonna be going in chronological order in terms of how we shot it because in terms of the edit, we're jumping back and forth between all these scenes. Because we were dealing with big windows, the scene was pretty much natural light. But what we did have is set deck come in and hang these drapes for us, which you can see on the edges of these windows and then there's two other windows on the side that also have these drapes as well that's diffusing all that natural sunlight we lucked out on this day because it was overcast and all that light coming in was diffused if it was any harsher it would just be a different look but this gave us a soft look and a nice inviting look that we were looking for and behind the camera we had two four by eight floppies kind of coved over to give us all this negative fill that you see here so on the her head on her sweater and then his sweater as well as his face too. And then if you look specifically at her face, this is what I was mainly looking at because her face is closer to the window. Uh, you see the Rembrandt lighting coming through in terms of that we have lots of wrap going around her face as well as we have it highlighting the edges of her head as well as her clothing. And if you look at the main artist, he's kind of behind her, so he's more in the shadows. Because of the room was all white, we're getting all this bounce light coming from all over each wall of the room which adds a nice soft source to the top of his face which is right here as well as the edges of the ear so in this scene specifically we really relied on location and then because we we're shooting with a camera that had a lot of dynamic range i wasn't really concerned about adding lights i was more concerned about shaping that light with negative fill the other frame that i want to cover in the sequence is this detailed shot of our supporting talent so again, we have a bunch of negative fill kind of coved over her. So this is using a four by eight floppy and then using the advantage of that floppy with a four by four over top of her and then a four by four beside her. And that's just giving all that negative fill, especially over on her shoulder here as well. And then we have all that natural light diffused by our shears brought in by art department. And that is giving us a nice wrap on the face and giving everything that we're looking for in terms of a gradient from her right side of her face to the left side when we're looking at camera. And in this shot specifically, we were falling off a little bit into the shadows when it came to the mid part of her face. So what we had to add is a Nanlite Pavo tube. And this was set to a warm color. And then this was giving us a little bit of fill back into her face, as you can see here in the PTS. This next scene is in a separate location, and this was mainly drawn from a reference from Euphoria. I forget the scene specifically, but I remember it being backlit, so we wanted to create that same thing. So in this location specifically, there was a big door, and then we had art department add in the shears that you see here. So we wanted these shears to block out a lot of the light, but not necessarily all of the light. 
So that was something that we requested from our department. And then in terms of the windows, we actually had a giant six by four scrim sitting in the back here, covering the entire windows. It's probably cut off at mid hip, but we blocked that with the talent specifically. And on the back of that panel, we had a IntelliTech Mega Light Cloth set to a warm color. And that was basically the lighting setup. Again, we're working with a camera with a lot of dynamic range. So we're seeing a lot of details in the shadows still, and we're not completely silhouetted. And that's something the director specifically wanted. He wanted this to feel a little bit silhouetted, but not completely where you don't see the details of the town that we're looking at. And that's just to bring the viewer into the intimacy of the scene specifically. What I love about this frame specifically is when you look at the edges, when it comes to the lightest part and darkest part, when they interact with each other, because you get this kind of halation and that was added by the colors specifically. But the lenses do a lot of work here in terms of the blooming as we didn't really have any filtration, as well as highlighting the subtle details such as his gold necklace, and then the, of course them embracing with their hands here and highlighting the edges of their hands and interacting as well. This performance was shot in the same bedroom. We just had to move a little things around to get the angles that we wanted here. The way we lit this was using the mega light cloth. So we kind of have that boomed over him and also wrapping around his face. I like to use a big source when keying something like this because it's a really soft and intimate feel. But in the back, we wanted to add some detail to that wall. So what we have here is a aperture 300D as well as a Forza 500. And then those are at different levels, splashing all that light onto the back wall that we see here. And then we also have a B7C bulb in here. And then that's set at a very low percentage. And it's kind of giving us our motivating light if you didn't know a window was here. But this was, again, those drapes that we we're looking at before. So it's safe to assume that all this daylight is coming from that as well. And to give some levels back into the left side of his face, we just had a bounce board here. And then that's the four by four bounce board. And that's bouncing all that light right back up into his face to fill that up. For the rooftop scene, we we're catching this as the sun was setting. So the sun is doing a lot of the work, but the sun is kind of in the background on this side. So we wanted to have the sunlight hitting their face. And the way we simulated that is using a Aperture 300D. And that's off on the side. And then that is skirting across them with a CTO over that. So it's giving us that orange look as the sun is setting. If we left it at that, we wouldn't have any shape on the left side of their face or camera side. We always want to shoot on the shadow side of our subject. So to add that shape in here, I actually had our gaffer or Hollywood a floppy right beside camera as we were shooting this scene. This is on the same rooftop, but a level lower. And what we want to simulate is the passage of time from them sitting up there with the harsh kind of sunlight and now coming down to this you know, soft sunlight as the sun comes to a complete set. So the way we did this is we had a six by four frame with uh, one stop of diffusion. And then we use that same aperture 300D with a CTO to give it that warm, inviting look. And that was diffused across the entire scrim. And then this is giving us that soft light that we see across her arms, his shoulder, and the nice gradient we have going into blue of, of his face. And then that was the colorist pushing that in for us. And then we see the gradient across the so sky to simulate that the sun is coming from this side but actually in reality it's not and that was just to fake it and then on the left side we just have one four by four floppy and this is just adding all that negative fill to the left side of our image in terms of the post-production process i was the editor on this project and it's a pretty standard music video edit it's a simple montage music video edit where we're working with multiple scenes and we have to cut between those in a cohesive manner and it was just a multi-revision process in terms of getting a look that we were all happy with in terms of the director, myself, as well as the artist. We kept the native open gate resolution of the RE Mini as we are a fan of that look and it fit the mood of the feeling of the project itself. The colorist we worked with on this project is Kevin Wu from Art Jail. We've worked with Kevin a lot in the past and he has a lot of experience hitting the film look that we specifically wanted for this piece. This experience was a new one for us in terms of music videos and we wanted to share that. Whether you're shooting on an industry standard cinema camera or your first mirrorless camera, the point is to go out and create something for yourself. And that's exactly what we did in this project. We hope you learned as much as we did from this project. And if you want to see future breakdowns like this, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.